Before we get started, just three quick things to keep in mind. Number one is obviously these are my thoughts, so it's just my opinions based on my knowledge and my experience with the game. So I, I don't want anyone to say like, oh, you know, Egg said this, so you're just wrong. I, I don't want my words to be used to invalidate someone else's opinion. I just want to share my thoughts, you know? It's fun making tier lists. Uh, the second thing is that tier lists are not truth. They're definitely not truth. They're, they're just guidelines, you know? They're a snapshot of the meta in one moment in time, a meta that is constantly changing, constantly evolving. And, you know, yeah, just because someone gets a super good result with a bad character, like a perceived bad character or a bad result with a perceived good character, that doesn't necessarily change the attributes of the character, you know? I, I don't want to hear someone be like, you know, Egg said Queen Nye is slow, but, but I got Diamond with Queen Nye uh, and Stingray is in a tournament with Queen Nye. Uh, I don't think that changes the attributes of the character, you know, kind of misses the point, right? Like, tier lists aren't resultless, they're comparisons of characters' relative strengths, and just because a character is bad doesn't mean that you can't succeed with them, like, definitely not. It just might be, you know, a little bit of a, of a steeper hill than those with more strengths, you know, that's, that's kind of the idea of it. Uh, the third thing, last thing I want to say is that this only really applies to the upper, upper echelon of play, you know, you can get rank 1 on literally any character in the game. That's no exaggeration. Any character in the game. You can also get top 8 in a major tournament with any character in the game. You know? That's why the tiers are the way they are, which is SS, S, A plus A. There's no tier below A, because I don't think any character in the game is below A tier. You know, Brawl is very, very balanced, uh, despite what you might think. I, in my opinion, it's very, very, very balanced, um, especially when compared to other games. So no character, no matter which one of these 50 you pick, no character will hold you back from getting gold or getting plat or getting diamond. It's about how you use the character. It's all about how you use the character. So with that out of the, out of the way, let's begin SS tier. And the first character I'm putting on this list is Sidra. You know, these tiers are going to be loosely ordered. And by that, I mean, you know, it's not Sidra 1 and then Caspian and then Dusk. Like, this is the order of the top four. It's like, okay, well, the top half is probably pretty much, you know, pretty strong. The second half of it, each tier might be a little weaker, but, you know, deciding between the first best character in the game and the second best, I don't think it's really worth it. They're so close that it doesn't really matter. So, loosely ordered, the first character is Sidra that I'm picking. The reason is that Cannon and Sword, well, she's basically just got everything, right? Cannon and Sword are meta right now with the Jayun patch buffs. Cannon has so much consistency. Sidelight, at all health values, no matter where you hit it, has potential follow-ups. Follow-ups that can lead to kills at super early percents or damage or positioning on the map. Cannon's basically just in a super good spot right now. And Sword also got a buff to Sidelight where Sidelight is more consistent. It goes zooming across the map. No matter when you hit it, you're pretty much gonna threaten a follow up, which is very scary. So Sword and Cannon are in meta. She's got the stats of the meta, which is, you know, if you run defense stance, you got seven defense, six speed. We're for sure in a speed defense meta. So she's got that for going for her. And then she's also got the signatures. Sword end sig, huge hitbox, good amount of force, amazing signature. Sword down sig, utility, force, it's got everything. And then obviously the cannonball, which is kind of the Sidra classic, the Sidra icon, uh, an amazing projectile. Nobody else can play cannon like her because of that uh, cannonball. So it's just a huge tool. Definitely one of the best characters in the game, in my opinion. Uh, next up, we're gonna have, gonna have, I can't say that word. <laughs> we're gonna have Nash. Uh, that that but but Zol, they look the same. All right, I'll put Nash up there too, because let's be honest here, Nash is also going up there. Uh, these are two characters, high strength, low dex. You know, they're kind of similar. Uh, with speed stance on Zol, you can get five speed. So basically, kind of the uh, the meta right now is you want five plus speed and five plus defense. And if you have those, you're pretty much set. And then after that it's like weapons and stat uh, weapons and signatures so these two characters both meet those Zul, everything i said about canon he's also got the signatures so he's got that canon end sig he's got that canon down sig which are super super good and then that side sig which i don't think is as strong but if you hit it it's death so it's always you always got that in the back pocket and then axe uh is for sure one of the top weapons of the meta right now very strong it's, it's got the damage, it's got the KO potential, it's got the Gimp potential, it's got pretty much everything. And it's also got a good matchup spread uh, against some of the more popular weapons in the game, which is also important, because it's relative tier list, right? A character means nothing on their own, but depending on the matchup, it matters a lot. So that's Zul. Nash, uh, Spear, pretty much everything I said about Cannon, Spear got that like times two, where not only did it get sidelight consistency, but it got downlight consistency. So... 
Spear is just a nightmare to fight against right now. It's so, so strong. It might look like small buffs because, oh, you know, it just got more consistent follow-ups, but those follow-ups were so central to, to uh, Spear's kit that it's basically just, like, it has so much control. It's got the end light ground control. It's got the side light ground control. It's got the down light air control. And uh, its only big weakness is grounded kill potential. But Nash also has that covered, not only with Hammer, which is an amazing killing weapon in and of itself, but also you got uh, Spear Side Sig and Spear End Sig. So, very, very, I mean, Spear End Sig, less thought of as a grounded kill move, but uh, an amazing signature none nonetheless. And then Hammer, I, I don't think I need to speak its praises for the fa past few months. It's been very, very strong. Grounded Nair, Side Light buffs, those have been big. And then the low dex does not hold him back. Once again, we take a look at his stats, and it's just it's just a winning stat line. You got 6 defense, 7 speed, 7 strength, and then the 2 dex is really not a big deal. So, Nash, one of the best characters in the game. I think up next should be no surprise given the most recent tournament. Uh, Onyx is definitely one of the best characters in the game. Speaking of stat lines, you got a 9 defense character potentially on your hands. Uh, if you want to run that. Also, I think uh, running speed is also a good option if you're if you're down for that. But uh, like Sidra, she's got the SIGs, right? I mean, like all these characters, I guess. Zola is less of a an obvious one. You know, we might move him around here and there, uh, given more characters adding to these tiers. But this is just uh, those that I want to talk about first. Onyx, I don't think it's any surprise, especially given uh, Sandstorm winning low tier city with her. But sh again, she's got the stats. I think Gauntlets might be a bit of a surprise seeing gauntlets like this early but they did get a pretty big buff with nair stun so now follow-ups are more consistent more deadly she's got the gauntlet down sig she's got the cannon end sig she's got the cannon side sig uh she's just got a lot going for her so pretty much nothing can hold her back except for a bad matchup which is you know i mean maybe that is a bad thing but i still think she's very 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 good all right, up next is Bryn. I don't think it should be a surprise given all the other legends we see in here. Spear, Axe, Signatures, Stat Lines. Uh, she's got high speed, which is very difficult to deal with. You can take away that dex and add it into an even another stat to get even more into one of those categories. I mean, we can see exactly what it is here if we want to. Uh, you can get more strength, which is always a good thing. Uh, you know, strength is, if you can get a little bit more strength for, for free, then it's a good thing. You got that downlight into NSIG string to kill at, like, super low HPs on smaller ceiling maps. You just got the control. You got it all. Britain's got it all. Up next is Baraza, if I can find him. Baraza, I don't think this should be a surprise either. You see him a lot in top level play, uh, given Cody's uh, dominance over the past couple months, although he did get second place in the most recent large tournament uh, to Sandstorm, as earlier mentioned. As mentioned earlier. <laughs> a native English speaker, by the way. Uh, yeah, he's got high defense. He's got the signatures of a madman. Axe and Sig, Blasters down Sig, are two of the best Sigs in the game, uh, especially when paired with his kit. I've been playing a lot of him recently. I'm thinking of picking him up in twos and for matchups that I don't like with Petra, uh, especially Lance. And that's a big thing, is I think Baraza is super strong against Lance, which is one of the most prominent weapons of the meta right now. It did get nerfed in the last patch. I don't think the mat the, the patch gutted Lance at all. I think Lance is still extremely strong. Um, and, you know, you see it a lot. And, and a lot of these top tier characters are going to be holding Lance. So Baraza, being able to deal with those, I think, on both of his weapons is a big deal. And then him also being a super strong character in his own right. You know, speaking of Lance... Let's get Orion up there. Spear, I don't even need to talk about it. All three of his signatures as well are insane. Stat spread, fantastic. Lance signatures, you know, with Lance getting kill nerfs, uh, a nerf to his kill killing power, signatures become even more important, and Orion has some of the best in the business. Lance, Ensig, and Sidesig, I'm sure you know, are difficult to deal with. In my opinion, Downsig is overshadowed, and I think it's actually the strongest of the three signatures. Uh, the amount of control you get, the amount of zone that you cover, and, uh, or the, the zone that you just like block off and then like trying to get in on Lance is already hard enough and then that signature just adds even more utility so I think Orion is super super good again spear fantastic right now Lance not as strong as it was last patch but still a very good weapon Orion uh, I feel very comfortable putting him up here next up I'm gonna put Olgrim I think Olgrim is one of the characters that was hit hardest by the Lance nerf given his signature kit you know people like Artemis people like Orion with super super good sigs or super quick sigs aren't hurt nearly as bad as the missing the killing power but Olgrim he is a little bit 
The thing is, though, he has Axe. And his Axe is fantastic. And Axe is one of those weapons that can secure knockouts with some of the best efficiency of any weapon in the game. So if you're in kill percent uh, with Ulgrim, it can be hard to kill with Lance, but uh, you pick up that Axe and you're smooth sailing. You got that down sig, you got that end sig, you got that side sig. You're chilling, especially with that down sig. Uh, I think his weapon compo, comp, comp? I was going to say comp and combo, so I said compo. That's a new word. I I'm coining that. I'm using that from now on. His weapon com compo, compost. Is, uh, it's good. I mean, it's fantastic. I, I can't lie. It's amazing. His stat spread is one of the best in the entire game. You take off that dex, and you got 7 speed, 7 defense. Killing this guy is going to be a nightmare. It is a nightmare. It's very difficult. Especially when he's got that lance that can cover so much area, and that axe that obviously, uh, as mentioned earlier, is very strong. Fantastic character. Uh, up next, I'm going to put Taros up here as well. Two heavy weapons. He's got low dex, which means those stats are allocated into different areas, which is great. He's got not the best signature kit, but uh, hammer downlight into downsig, fantastic. Hammer nsig is fantastic, and then that axe nsig always has that cheese potential to just kill someone at zero if you hit it off stage. So that's uh, that's always something to consider. He's just got the weapon combo, like dealing with lance. He has axe. I think hammer can struggle with it, but uh, he has that axe, which I I feel like has a pretty good matchup into lance. Uh, and then he's just able to trade with pretty much anyone, given his stat spread. Like, higher defense and then obviously high strength means that even if you lose neutral like three times in a row, if you win it once, you're going to be tied up. So, very, very, very strong character right now. Uh, up next is Bodvar. Again, speaking the praises of Hammer and Sword, he's the classic, you already know him. Uh, Stomp Ensig covers a billion dodges, so you can get an early, maybe cheesy kill with that uh, on the Hammer. And then Sword Downsig as well super super good at getting earlier kills but then obviously just he's an all-around great character there's really nothing holding him back uh, at any point in time as like a character itself the thing that would hold him back is like matchups or meta kind of like what i was talking about with onyx but when his weapons are good he's one of the best in the game and his weapons are good so here he is all right up next is kaya so kaya is a little bit weird to put up here uh some people might think you know, maybe she deserves to be an S or, or something like that. But I, I think Kaya definitely has a place in SS tier. Uh, again, maybe that distinction is really not that important, but it, it's whatever. Uh, she's got the weapons, obviously. Spear, like I said, praised it all day, <laughs> all video so far. And then Bo has a great amount of control. Uh, the thing that she struggles with is killing. So if you're playing against someone who really is good at avoiding Spear's uh, aerial kill options like Downlight and like that Falling Sair or Recovery. Uh, killing with Spear is going to be difficult. The thing is with Bow though, you can really, really force people into situations where they've got to guess right or they're just dead. The amount of coverage that you have with Ensig, you zoom across the map and you hit with a big hitbox. Side Sig, you zoom across the map and hit Grounded. And then Down Sig is kind of like stop you in place, catch you in your tracks. If someone's just walking forward or you read their movement, you can kill them with that. So I think her killing power, although a little limited when compared to someone like Taros, obviously, uh, if you're if she's in the right hand, she's extremely dangerous and she's extremely deadly, really. Like dealing with her is very difficult. This is one of those characters that's gonna whittle you down. It's gonna be hard to catch her. It's gonna be hard to kill her, and she's got the weapon set right now. I think to contend with the best of the best. So Kaya, uh, another bow character, Koji. Again, sword got buffed and Koji. Like Bodvar is one of those characters that, if things go right, he's just super good. He's actually extremely unique in that he's going to be, like, the I think the only character in here. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. I, I need to look at the whole list when I'm done. But the only character in here with extremely high dex. And that's kind of the thing about Koji is that although he has that kind of holding him back, he's still that good. Like, his signatures and his weapon comp is so good that even in a stat spread that's not meta, he can be carried to be one of the best characters in the game, in my opinion. Koji's just got, he's got everything. He's got killing power with his sword. He's got control with his bow. He, he like It's like a perfect weapon combo. He's got the perfect signatures to go along with it. The only thing is that he's not got the perfect stat spread for the meta right now, but he's still just that good. You know who kind of does have a, have a lot going for them though? It's, it, it's a kind of similar character is Scarlet where she's got the 5 in the defense and speed if you lock in the speed stance, and from there it's just smooth sailing. Like, her signature kit, I, you, like, yeah, <laughs> you, you already know. I think she has 
one of the best six signatures in the entire game. Like if you if you look at someone like Onyx, like Onyx obviously has insane sigs, but then Ken and Down sig is a little bit of a buster compared to the others. Or you look at Sidra where it's like, okay, she has some insane sigs, but then Ken and Down sig is a little bit of a buster. And then Scarlet, you look at like all of her signatures are insane. So that's a big thing to consider. The reason why I don't put her higher is like she's on the lower half of SS is because Lance did get nerfed. So that is something to consider. Again, I don't think it's extremely terrible and the weapon's gutted, but it, it did get nerfed. Uh, and then also playing against Axe, I think both of her weapons can struggle against Axe. So if you're a Scarlet player and you really, really struggle against Axe, it might be worth considering someone that can deal with that better, uh, given that I think Axe has the power to just float above Hammer and, and, and really, really oppress it. And it can be under Lance and it can contest those horizontal hitboxes with its own. But with that said, she may struggle against Axe, but she's still an, a, an amazing character. Like, don't let that distract you from the fact that Scarlet's one of the best characters in the entire game. She's super good. Super good. A very different character, all the way on the other end of the spectrum, is Hattori. The complete opposite of hit you three times and then hit you with a signature and you're dead. It's hit you 20 times, never get hit, and then you're dead. Uh, high speed, obviously, is great. She can lock in that five defense if she needs. Uh, sword buffs, spear buffs... Again, really, really knock her up. Like Bodvar, she's one of those characters that, if everything lines up with her weapons in the meta, she's fantastic. You know, some characters that's not necessarily true with, right? Like, if your stats don't work out, or if your signatures aren't that great, even if you have two weapons in the meta, you might not really be as strong as the best of the best. Um, but Hattori is one of those, so. Great character. Fantastic. She's a lot of fun, too. Uh, up next, I'm going to put Isaiah in here on the lower half. Again, this is not in order of best to worst this is more like all right it's kind of a gradient where like these t these group of characters are like some of the best and like these group of characters are also some of the best but maybe not as strong or something like that so it's not like hattori is just worse than bodvar you know i can like move them around uh, just to reiterate that um but isaiah again canon i think he has one of the best cannons uh with that down sig and with that end sig and i think he has also super super strong guns where gun end sig is one of the best sigs in the game, like one of the best gun end sigs, or one of the best gun sigs for sure. Uh, I should say blasters. I don't want to get demonetized. Uh, he's just solid all around. Uh, he's got a good, he's got a good head on his shoulders. You know, good signatures, good stats. You know, we can take a look here. Where is he? He's right here. You know, you can get that seven defense. You can get that five speed. You know, maybe the high dex holds him back a little bit. It would be probably be better if he had more in strength, but you know, that's okay. That's okay. He's got the cannon right now. He's got the guns. Guns. I don't think they're the best weapons, but when you look at what he's able to do, he's able to do a lot, and I think that's very important, especially with that cannon, uh, cannon buffs. Alright, the last character I'm going to put in this tier, I think, I may move people around, I might move people up, uh, I'm going to put Jayun. I'm going to put Jayun. I know he's very new, he's been out for about a week and a half at this point, two weeks almost. He is just sword alone. I think worthy of being S tier, like if you only had sword, because his sword signatures I think are in, are in, in need of some tweaking is, is how I put it. Sword side sig is like literally top three sigs in the game and then sword end sig is nigh unpunishable, uh, so just that alone. And then I th honestly think greatsword is super strong, like I think greatsword is really really good. Punishing its ground moves is very difficult. Sidelight and then the si sidelight downlight bridge is very difficult to punish. Downlight just zooms, and light catches dodges up and people in the air. And then it's got the Nair and recovery obviously that just are amazing at juggling if you've played against uh, some good Jayuns. As for greatsword sigs, N sig stands out as phenomenal. Side sig stands out as phenomenal. Down down sig I think I'll need a little bit more time, but it's got a pretty huge hitbox, which is always a good thing to have. He's just great. I I I think uh I think he deserves to be up here. You know what? I was gonna put Wu Shang at top of S, but I'm gonna move him up to SS. Wu Shang, he's got spear. Not only does he have spear, which again is one of the best weapons in the entire game right now, but he's got some of the best spear signatures. Spear side sig and spear end sig alone, again, like Jayun is enough to like just carry 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 him up uh to compete with some of the best of the best and gauntlets right now again are pretty good the reason why he's on the lower half of here despite having like the best spear in the game is that gauntlets can sometimes struggle against heavier weapons like lance where you know you kind of get outranged 
and then you might be able to get a long string, but you can't really get that gimp potential either, because lance is super, super hard to gimp. So there's some weapons that gauntlets can get outranged by or struggle with, but with that said, like Wuxiong, very good. Up next, I'm going to put Thor. I think Thor has fallen out of favor uh, by some of the top players, but I still think that he's extremely strong. He's got the hammer once again, very good weapon. And then Orb, I'm a little bit biased because I'm an Orb player, but I think it's a little underdeveloped, and I think it's actually way stronger than, uh, than a lot of people think. And then he's got, like, everything. He's got signatures. This is kind of the trend you'll notice with these characters in the top tiers is generally speaking they've got the signatures and they've got the stats and then their weapons happen to be meta so it's just like waiting for the right moment and thor he's not in the perfect moment because i don't think orb is the best weapon in the game uh, i don't think hammer is the best weapon in the game but they're pretty damn close so thor is uh thor is up there he's up there and he's got the signatures he's got the stats great character vector is also one of those where again lance i think is still very strong bow has a lot of control and he's got He's got some nutty sigs. He's got some nutty sigs. He's got some good stats. I don't think I really, you know, as we get into more characters, I don't I don't think I'll need to explain as much because it kind of applies. Lance and sig. Lance side sig can be a little difficult to deal with, but I think n sig is really the uh, the key there. And then his bow signatures obviously are, are, are great. So Vector's a great character. Uh, Azoth. Azoth is also good. Uh, again, I might move these characters around as more are added, but Azoth, I think, is definitely, like, when I think S tier, I think Azoth. He's got six signatures once again like scarlet like some characters they've got five i think vector has five sigs with that lance down sig you know you don't really use that down sig in every match again not like it's unusable but you don't really use it all the time whereas i think with azoth you can use all six of his sigs in one match like plenty plenty of times so he's got everything again lower decks not a big deal right now he's got the axe he's got the bow which can deal with some difficult matchups i think uh for for the axe or for some other heavy weapons that you might compare them to. Just great character. Core. You know, I talked about gauntlet buffs earlier, but gauntlet buffs I think are a big deal on core because he's also got those signatures to kill early. Uh, as you build up more damage on gauntlets, it might be a little difficult to kill. I mean, not as difficult as something like Katars maybe or something like uh, like a bow. Uh, actually, I think it's pretty comparable to bow, but core's got the signatures to back it up. Again, hammer, high defense, good speed with that speed stance. You're, you're chilling on core. You're chilling. Uh, I think Artemis, this is the first scythe character that you're, we're seeing here, uh, she's just got the lance, like, lance nerfs, honestly, I'm gonna put her higher, like, I'm gonna put her higher up, again, not that it really matters, but as we add more characters, it probably will, uh, she's just got, like, that lance side sig, lance end sig are super good, scythe is not as in favor as it once was, very clearly, I think the weapon is still very strong, it's just significantly harder to use than some of the other weapons to get the same effect. So it's not like it's bad, it's just you'll generally have to put in more work for the same result, which I think is important to consider, right? Because people aren't perfect, they're gonna mess up, or they're gonna they're gonna, they're gonna make mistakes, you know, that's the same thing. But So a weapon like Scythe, where you can probably, like, you can make less mistakes, Wait, how do I phrase this? With a weapon, with a heavier weapon like axe, like lance, like hammer, you can make less mistakes and get kind of the same result. As for scythe, you need to be more quote unquote perfect to get the same result. So while scythe might have more tools, it's just significantly harder to get that all the time, which is I think why you see less of it. It's just it's harder to reach those peaks, even if the peaks might be higher. But with that said, Artemis has a fantastic lance. She's got the killing power. She's got a she's got the high speed. She's got a lot going for her, so I think she's very good. Uh, up next is Val, if I can find her again. Sword good, gauntlet's good, S stat spread's fantastic, signatures, great. She's just solid. She's she's always solid. Like Even when gauntlets are bad, you'll still see a lot of Vals. Again, not that that's an indicator of whether a character is good or bad, but uh, but she's still super good. So, yeah. All right, Mordex, it's been far too long. Since we've put Mordex on here, maybe we can move him up. Maybe we can move him down. I don't know. Mordex, I don't think I really need to talk about it that much. He's just a beast. That was, that was an unintentional pun. I'm, God, I hate when I do that. Because <laughs> then people point it out and they're like, what's that? Whatever. He's, he's just, a, he's a beast. So, yeah. Uh, I don't think I need to talk about it. Every signature. Uh, not every, but the signatures you're thinking of are great. Up next, I'm going to put Yumiko up here. She has a very unique hammer, which is fantastic it's great 
because hammers are already good and then she's also add even more zone control onto a weapon that already controls so much space and that's yumiko's hammer with that orb that uh that that, that orb sig i shouldn't say orb because that's a weapon in our game now but a hammer down sig summons those little fire orbs so that's super good and then bow a lot of control a lot of coverage it can deal with something like axe i think fairly well maybe not the best well you know i think gauntlets can deal with axe like very very well uh, especially if you knock them off stage but it still can deal with that if hammer struggles it can also deal with lance i feel like so yumiko has got some matchups covered she's got area covered and really she's kind of area denial of the character so i i think she's very strong despite not having the best stats for this meta i think she's still very strong uh rayman uh it's kind of a meme i guess on this channel i always talk about rayman but rayman like don't forget that rayman is just a super good character like Axe down sig, that thing is a light attack that kills like a heavy attack. So, something to be something to be wary of. All three of his axe sigs are fantastic. All three of his gauntlet sigs are great. He's just got a lot going for him. I mean, he's got a big nose too. So that's like even another thing going for him. He's got everything. Literally got everything. He's great. He's great. I see the orange hair, so I'm just going to put Roland right next to him. Roland, I think, also deserves to be in this tier. High defense. Fantastic. Lance, great. Sword can cover that lance weakness of not killing uh, as efficiently anymore, so that's great. Sword signatures, great. Lance down sig, insane. Lance end sig, eh, but you know, lance down sig, insane. So, Roland, very good character, deserves to be up here. Sword end sig, sword down sig, sword side sig. I don't think I need, I think I said sword sig, but sword end sig, sword down sig. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fate, some people might be thinking I'm putting fate a little bit low. Uh, it's really just because, uh, just because of, sp of Scythe, Scythe being uh, less favored in the meta, and she's also not got the strongest Scythe. But don't forget that she has the best orb in the game. She's got an amazing stat spread. She's got, I just, oh, her signatures, like her, if I had fate, like if Petra had fate sigs, she would instantly be like, like a better character. Or like if any orb character had fate sigs, because fate sigs are just like, it's just, a, it's just another world. Like you're living in another universe when you play fate when you play Fate's Orb. So clearly, she like, with all that I'm saying about her, she's very strong. Uh, I'll bump her up to, like, you know, more in this range. She's just super, 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 super good when she's on fire. She's not as on fire right now, which is why she's not here. But, you know, I think that should speak volumes to how good Fate is, is that even when both of her weapons are not, like, the top of the top, she's still in this, like, super, super good range of characters. So don't, ask, don't underestimate Fate. Talking like that about Fate actually makes me think of Jala, who's another one of those characters where it's kind of surprising why she's not, like, right here. Uh, the reason is just stats. Like, she has Axe and Sword, which together would probably put her into SS, and then she's got Jala signatures, which would put her into, like, like this range right here, but she's got three base defense, and that's such a big deal right now. That is such a big deal, and unfortunately, I think that holds her back from being you know, top half of SS, and puts her kind of in mid part of S, you know, like this kind of range, where even if Jala has everything going for her, she doesn't have everything going for her, which is very unfortunate, right? She's got the meta, she's got the weapons, she's got the signatures, but she just doesn't have the stats. So that that's what holds her back, but don't, don't forget, don't forget, Jala, insane character, insane. Diana is interesting because we're definitely in heavy weapon meta right now and neither of her weapons are heavy but she's one of those characters that's always gonna be on the top half of these lists like unless something happens where guns and bow are completely gutted diana is always chilling because she's got the perfect signatures for her weapons and then she's also got a great weapon combo uh, as well as great stats i don't think i really need to touch on it too much i think we're familiar with diana's strength so yeah just putting her in s tier Lin Fei. I think Katars are not in their best place right now. I think they're one of the weaker weapons in the game, uh, which is why she's not as uh, high up as the other cannon legends. But don't forget that she has cannon, which is, uh, by general consensus, probably the best weapon in the game right now uh, among top players. So don't 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 forget that she has cannon. Not only does she have cannon, but she has cannon down sig and cannon end sig, which are crazy good, like crazy good. So Lin Fei, despite having a weapon comp that's not the best in the meta, She's still meta. Like, she's still meta. Uh, as is Petra, in my opinion. Uh, again, I'm biased because I play Petra. She's my main. So maybe I think she's stronger than, he is, than she actually is. But remember everything I said about Fate's Orb? 
apply that now to Petra's gauntlets. And, like, there you have it. Petra has, in my opinion, the bar none, the best gauntlet signatures in the game. Ensig and side sig are fantastic. Down sig is more niche, but it kills super, super early. Uh, she has 8, 4, 5, 5, I believe, if you lock into that, uh, that, speed, that defense stance. Excuse me. Uh, again, five, 5 defense, 5 speed. You're chilling. She's got the killing power with orb. She's got the killing power with gauntlets, which is not something you can say for every legend. And I, I, just, I just think she's great. She's strong. She's fun. She's fantastic. She looks cool in-game. S-tier character. Ragnir, he's got Axe. And again, he has guitars, which aren't the strongest right now, but he also has the stats. And, and that's, again, that's kind of like the thing with Lin Fei is that, yeah, I actually, I'm going to put her lower because of her stats. But like, it's kind of similar where they're just missing one critical piece, which is guitars being super strong because they've got everything else. They've got the weapons. They've got the signatures. They're just missing one of those things. I guess Lin Fei is also missing too, given her stats red, but. Uh, yeah, Ragnar, I, again, I kind of like Diana, he's always up here, he's always at the top of these lists, so I don't really think I need to go into it too much, but just great character all around. Cassidy, like Koji, is kind of an oddball out, where she, despite having super high decks, which means that she has low stats in other categories, she's still so good. Like, her signatures are some of the best in the entire game on both weapons, which is a big deal, because Hammer and Sig just gives her, kind of like Yumiko, a completely unique hammer, and it's different, where Yumiko has like more stalling, more area control, Cassidy just has, boom, you got lassoed, and then you're gonna die earlier now, and now you can't approach me from the skies, because I have lasso, and you're not gonna punish me for it, because you can't, and then she's got guns, you've got that, uh, uh I, don't, I don't even know, you've got that matchup coverage, you've, you've just got Cassidy, like Cassidy, if I'm being honest right now, even though she's not in the SS tier, she kind of scares me the most out of every character in the game. Maybe that's not entirely true, but she she's up there. Like, she scares me as much as these characters. I just think looking uh, at her strengths in, a, like, in, a, in, a, in an analysis like this, I don't think she has the same uh, amount of strengths or the same amount of attributes as these SS characters, but don't forget that Cassidy is amazing. It's been a while since we've looked at a spear character, so uh, let's bump Mirage up here. Uh, yeah, well, let's bring up Mirage. I think she's, uh, definitely finds her place in the top half of S. Her spear is fantastic. Her spear signatures are great. Her scythe is boosted, boosted, boosted up by scythe Ensig, which I think is, like, just an incredible, incredible move. Again, scythe, maybe not the most meta right now, so it holds her back from being up here, but just great character all around. Don't forget. Don't forget about Mirage. I know a lot of people forget about Mirage because they play more decks. I think I'll put more decks a little higher than her. But, uh, yeah, don't forget about Mirage. I guess while we're on the train of, uh, of Scythe characters, we'll also put Volkov up here. Volkov, he's... Uh, he's just such a weird character, man. Like, he just overwhelms you with signatures. I think he's, like, a little underplayed, so you don't really see him that much, you don't really play against him that much, but when you're playing against a good Volkov, it's like, you kind of feel helpless. All of his Scythe signatures are crazy. That Ensign got nerfed a little bit, so it's not as... Not, not as oppressive, but, uh... That Axe side sig, if you use the short version, is like instant, and that end sig is like instant, and then that down sig kills you super early. He's literally like the weirdest character in the game, but also simultaneously extremely good. And I think he's very underrated in the sense that he's not played as much as you might expect given his strength. But again, that doesn't necessarily correlate. Uh, I just think he's really good. I think he's sleeper S here for sure. Cross is always memed on that he's forgotten. Uh, but I actually think Volkov is kind of more forgotten. I actually think Dusk is even more forgotten, but that, that's that's another story. That's, a, that's a, a video for another day. I guess I already made it, but yeah, Cross is, uh, he's very good. I, I don't think I need to talk about it too much, uh, given that we're reaching the second half of this S tier, you know, the bottom half. Very strong. Uh, not really much holding him back other than matchup spreads. He's got pretty good signatures. I think his gun signatures are a little lacking, but on Gauntlets, he has great ones. Uh, he's got high strength, which is cool. He's got a, he can match up to those stats that you need, meets the requirements, uh, got low dex, which means, again, those stats are allocated into different areas, which is always a good thing. He's just got a lot going for him. He's good, he's strong, he's powerful. He just doesn't necessarily have the best matchups spread in the game. Zariel, I think, is another one of those characters. We kind of got, like, a forgotten trio here, where they don't get the most amount of play, and they don't get the most amount of attention, but they are definitely strong. Actually, we kind of got, like, a little bit of a, a little bit of a matching gaze here. Uh, yeah, good signatures, meets those stat requirements, 
good weapon combo. I think uh, gauntlets and bow is very good because gauntlets is like in your face and bow is like control all this space. And then the signatures, gauntlet end sig, gauntlet side sig, fantastic. Bow end sig is very good. Bow side sig, I think, is a little overshadowed by something like Kaya signatures, but uh, it's still very good. And again, like, might be a little underappreciated, but by no means underpowered. Ada, like Jala, has pretty much everything going for her, uh, except for that, <laughs> except for that stat spread. It's very sad, but three defense is really such, such a big thing holding uh, characters back in this current meta. You know, it wasn't always that way, but right now defense is just so important to have, especially when you're up against single hit high damage weapons like the axe, like the lance, uh, when you're against string weapons that are super effective and, and like the cannon. Having low defense kind of sucks. She does have spear, which was buffed. She does have an amazing signature. I've been talking for too long. <laughs> she has an amazing signature. Sign I still can't say it. Signature kit. Signature kit on both weapons. Uh, yeah, I'm going to stop talking about Ada now. This is painful. But she's great. She just doesn't have the defense to knock her up to here is basically it. I'm going to put Dusk at the top of A plus tier. I think this description kind of describes him pretty well, which is strong, but slightly overshadowed. Like, don't don't be mistaken. Dusk is very strong. I, I've made two videos about him talking about how good he is. Uh, I just think he's slightly overshadowed. To be honest, I might even bump him up to S tier, but uh, just for visual aesthetics, let's keep him here. <laughs> but this the difference between him and Ada, I think, is very small, uh, if that means anything. But he's got great signatures, you know? Orb side sig, orb down sig are fantastic. Spear side sig, spear end sig are fantastic. But I do think he's a little overshadowed. If he, again, if he had seven defense instead of seven dex on his base stance, he'd probably like be around here. But I think having that high dex is kind of a little bit of a detriment right now, which holds him back a little bit, which makes him slightly overshadowed where you can play Wu Shang, who, yeah, he might also have a very, very similar stat spread, but he's also got Wu Shang spear. And that's really di the difference. Like, if Dusk had Wushong Spear, ba-boom. But he doesn't. He has Dusk Spear, which is good. It's just not Wushong Spear. So that's why he's right here. I do think Orb is very strong right now. Uh, I just don't think he's the Orb Legend to pick. I think Thor, if you're if you're picking any Orb Legend, I think Thor is the one to pick right now. Uh, and Dusk, although being very strong, is slightly overshadowed. I think Nyx is in a similar boat where, like, yeah, you can play Guns and Scythe, but you could also play Guns and Lance, or, or Scythe and Lance, or you could play Mordex, or you could play Fate Orb and Scythe. Uh, and Nyx, being a very strong character in, in her own right, I think is a little bit overshadowed right now. Uh, having Guns and having Scythe on the same character, I think they don't necessarily cover the weaknesses of each other in, like, in enough of a like grand sense to bring her all the way up to something like the top of S tier, uh, which is why I think she's a little overshadowed. But if guns were like top three weapon in the game, Nyx has everything going for her. She's like a character like Bodvar, where if everything is going for her, she's one of the very, very best, but she doesn't have everything going for her right now. And that's why she's here. Sentinel is one of those characters where it's like, I, I, I feel like nobody ever plays him despite him being very scary. And that's the thing about him is like, he's got the stats right now. He's got low dex. He's got high speed. He's got high defense. He's kind of got a Kaya-esque stat spread. And then he's got Hammer. He's got those Hammer signatures. In fact, I'll, I'll put him up here uh, at, the, at the very top half. But he also has Katars, which is a bit unfortunate because, again, I do think Katars are on the weaker end of the weapons right now, especially in a heavy weapon meta, where Katars, for each hit, you're doing way less damage than someone like a Zul. And like I was talking about earlier with Scythe, where it's like, okay, well... If you win neutral like 10 times perfectly, yeah, you're going to be untouchable and the opponent's going to do nothing. But doing that compared to winning neutral like 5 times and maybe losing twice and still getting the same result, it's a lot more difficult. And I think difficulty, again, is something really to consider when you look at characters. So Sentinel, despite having a lot going for him, also has one thing holding him back. And I think that thing holding him back, or uh, what is going for him, is not as strong as these other characters. Uh, in this bottom half of S tier, which I think it's similar where they have a lot going for them, but one thing holding them back, I think they just have more going for them than Sentinel. And that's why he's an A+. Vrax has... <laughs> Vrax is such a weird character to tier because he has, like, a pretty bad stat spread for today's meta, but then he's also, like, got some of the best sigs in the entire game. So it's really weird to tier a character like that where it's kind of like... I don't even know. Unfortunately, Vrax has 8 decks. 
which if he didn't and instead he had like five or he had four or he had three ba-boom but he doesn't and i really think that eight decks holds him back and it's not like koji where he's got he's he's where he's koji and he's just so well-rounded and all of his signatures are super well-rounded and both of his weapons cover each other perfectly and then his stats despite having eight decks are fine Vrax has all of those, except even if you try and lock in certain stances, his stats kind of get obliterated. So, Vrax, unfortunately, I think is an A-plus tier. It's a little bit dangerous, again, because Vrax can kill you in, like, yellow with Lance Downsig, but we're going to put him here. I think Lance nerfs are what really convinced me between uh, putting him in S and putting him in A-plus. Despite having some of the most efficient killing uh, signatures on the Lance in the game, I think it's very comparable to Orion. Uh, I just think he's held back by the meta right now. Guns, Lance. Uh, Lance fell out of favor a little bit. Again, I still think it's like top five, but uh, top six. But Guns also not uh, not in that top three to bring him all the way up like Orion is right now. If you've noticed the trend, I don't think it's a surprise then that Asuri is also in this tier. Higher decks, which means, again, those stats are not in other categories. Sword, which is very, very good, you know. But, uh, but those guitars, they hold her back. And I think it's a similar case with sentinel were those things that are super super good for her she just doesn't have as many of those as ragnir i just think ragnir right now is a uh, kind of stronger than asuri not because he's just a better character all around but because the current meta right now just situates him in a better spot i don't know if that's the right word of that right use of that word but he's positioned in a better spot than her again not because he's just strictly better but because the current things that surround them uh favor ragnir more lucian is a similar case where he's He's just got, like, a, something holding him back, which is, in big part, weapon comp right now. I think Katars and Guns is fantastic, but for today's meta, it's not. And although he has great signatures, although he has great stats, he also just doesn't have, in my opinion at least, the explosive power of Onyx, and the unkillableness of Kaya, and the control of Scarlet, uh, where in previous metas he did, and he was this character. But today, I don't think he is. He's just a little overshadowed. You know, that's all it is. All right, as as we're closing out this tier, I think it's no surprise that Queen Nye is on the bottom half of this tier list. I, I talked a little bit about her in, in the intro section. Again, by no means are any of these characters bad. Let me let me reiterate that. None of these characters are bad. Look at the tiers they're in. They're in A, A+, plus, S, S, S. Like, they're still very good. Queen Nye is very familiar with being an A tier in our current speed meta, but A+, plus, the reason why I'm bumping her up is the most recent patch. Queen Nye got one of the biggest buffs to Spear out of any Spear character, because now she has Downlight into Ensig true at all HP values, which is insane, like actually insane. So even though she has three speed, which three speed like really, really, really sucks. Like having three speed, it just sucks because it means that you can't get up to five, you're stuck at four. And by sucks, I don't mean it's like terrible. I mean it like it sucks to play it. Like I wish, that Queen Nye had 4 speed, because then she get she could get up to 5 and she'd be a lot more fun, uh, in my opinion. Like, it, it just sucks to have it. It sucks that she's limited to having three, 2, 3, or 4 speed, and she can't get up to 4. Or, or she's not base 4, so she can't get up to 5, or she's not base 5, so she can't get up to 6. But don't forget that Queen Nye has incredible signatures. Spear and Sig, even without the combo, is one of the best Spear Sigs in the game, because it hits grounded, and it hits aerial, and it's super quick, and it kills, and it does a lot of damage. But, uh, yeah. Also, Katars not being in their strongest state keeps her from being, uh, being higher. I think if Katars were the best weapon in the game, uh, Queen Naya would be, like, here. Even though she has three speed, which is insane. Think about it. If she had the two best weapons in the game, she'd still be S tier because of, because of speed. So, yeah. That, that's something to consider. Uh, I think it might be controversial that I'm not putting her here. But, uh, bottom half of A+, I think, is where she belongs with the spear buffs. But, yeah. Getting into it now, uh, I think Ember... Ember is rough. It's rough to play Ember. She has Bow and Sig, which is one of the best Bow, bow Sigs in the game. I feel like I've said that for a lot of characters on the lower half of these tier lists, where they have like one Sig that's like one of the best in the game. But low defense, high dex, Katars, not heavy weapons. Unfortunately, in today's meta, she's got a lot holding her back. And again, it's not that she's unviable, because look, viable but has a weakness. We're chilling. I covered my bases. It's just playing her is going to be harder than playing like Sidra or playing Nash, or it's going to be harder to get the same efficiency with her compared to other characters. And if you're a pro at bow and, and katars, 
it's way easier but i'm just saying like uh if you look at the character's strengths and you look at the character's weaknesses uh caspian also his weapon comp is uh has always been something that people talk about when they put him on tier lists where they don't necessarily cover each other the best they're very similar uh they both struggle to kill at times so having two weapons that struggle to kill is kind of difficult you know olgrim is one of those characters where i talked a little bit about struggling to kill but he's always got that axe to back up his lance or scarlet always has that hammer caspian doesn't necessarily have something like that like if you switch to his guitars when you get someone to kill percent on gauntlets you're kind of just fishing for a guitar side sig which is a great sig but it's much more difficult to do than having a scarlet hammer which is hammer plus scarlet sigs so yeah caspian not in meta right now unfortunately but again viable he just has a little bit of weakness thatch low defense i don't think i really need to talk about it he's just unfortunately he's got that holding him back and if he didn't have it thatch would be insane like don't 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 forget that thatch is crazy but uh but yeah, and, and then and then we can look at this, and we can see that Jiro is also going here. Uh, it's memed a lot, Jiro, uh, haha, Jiro sigs, but it is true. Jiro signatures, with the exception of, like, Scythe down sig, and then Scythe end sig sometimes. It, like, his signatures are fine, they're just not Mordex signatures, and they're not, like, who, who has sword? They're not Koji signatures, you know? So, that holds him back. Viable, but has a weakness. I mean, you look at his sword, and then you look at Jayun's sword, and Jayun is just like Jiro's sword, but like better. I kind of I, I mentioned that in the video I made with Faison. But yeah, that was a that was a long recording session. My throat is kind of parched again. Remember the three things I said at the beginning of this video. If you see people in the comments, I've lost my ability to speak again. Obviously, <laughs> clearly, uh, if you see people in the comments like having those kinds of things where they just like attack people because it's opinion different than mine, or they say like, oh, but then I got ranked with this character, so they can't be they can't be bad well first off i'm not even saying any of these characters are bad i'm saying all of them are good all of them are good enough to get you rank one all of them are good enough to get top eight at a major tournament uh, it's all about the person it's all about how you use them how comfortable you are with their weapons with their signatures with their stats how comfortable you are with this tier list now that was a bad transition it's fine i'm comfortable with it so that's what matters